So welcome everyone to another episode of Analytics Corner. I'm Dan the Pom and today we're discussing probably a team that is probably synonymous with Carlton in Collingwood, a team that are one of our rivals um, historically, uh, a team incidentally that I see a lot of throughout the year, a good couple of mates of mine, big shout out to you, um, a Collingwood fan, so I do get and see Collingwood quite a bit in the flesh. Now 2019, they were again so close but yet so far, and they come into 2020 really statistically at the peak age to win a flag. Now you look at their squad, they've got all the tools required to mount a serious challenge to go all the way this year and have some serious strength across each line. It's hard to believe that this is year nine as well of Buckley's reign um, since he took over from Malthouse. And after two heartbreaks, are they in a position to really go to the next level? So let's have a look at what they did in the off-season. As you can see, they brought in Darcy Cameron, who's strong airily and fits the mould of all the top sides who seem to play an option of a rotating Ruckman during the game. His aerial presence really buys into Collingwood's game plan, which is a very mark-heavy, long-kick game. Finishing first for average marks per game, Collingwood did, and kicks per, by, kicks per game. They are one of the top teams at doing that. They also, incidentally, have more short kicks than any team in the comp. Darcy's a really mercurial talent, and he showed that in state level, so, but can he step up to the AFL level? I think he's more than a capable understudy for Brody Camp Grundy, and he seems to um, really offer that alternative. And a good thing about Grundy is he never gets injured. So, for me, I think he may be the kind of looking at Mason Cox position. We know Mason Cox wasn't as consistent last year, didn't go up, so it really does add the heat on that because Cameron did play forward as well for Sydney State side. So that's exciting. Jake Randall is another one and. If ever there was a Pies midfielder, if that is a thing, he's got steel side bottom like endurance and he's super composed on the ball. He smashed the 2K record in combine and he's a really intriguing prospect for me, particularly with an aging list. He's someone that comes in and just brings that profile down. And I suspect at some point we will see him find a spot on the fifth wing and he's got the game that gets the Pies faithful going. He has a basketball background too and he's got a keen eye for goal. Now, we know Collingwood have history with ex-basketballers in the midfield, Ala Pendlebury. Um, probably just needs to sharpen his disposal by foot, amongst other things. But that's probably his big key point this year, particularly to fit into that Collingwood system. But exciting prospect. Now, Trent Bianco, I had big raps on at the pre-draft video. A lot of talk about him if you look in super coach as well. Now, what he lacks up for in size, physical size, he makes up for in footy IQ. He's very assured on the ball, reads the game well, and he's a really exciting prospect. Will feature, I'd imagine, him and Rantel in the coming years. They have all the tools, add a bit of muscle. And for me, when you redo the 2020 draft, I'd imagine to see Rantel and Bianca a lot earlier than when they were taken. Trey's another one. He could be anything. He's a good intercepting tall def defender. And as we all know, tall defenders take time to develop. But he does have Darcy Moore, who for me is one of the best at his craft to learn from. And that's only going to escalate his development. Once he builds his frame, he's got all the tools to be that modern day intercepting mark that we know he's becoming very in vogue in today's game. Now let's have a look at their 22. Now, their backline for me, Collingwood's, is one of the least talked about in the AFL. When it's at its best and the best six are available, you've got everything. You've got your high-flying Howe down there who just really can change a game. He's, he's, he's always up and about in the backs of the year. He's fearless. He's courageous. You've got Moore, who on his day for me is as good as anyone in the company's position. Jack Chris provides that zip and he accumulates the ball that... A lot of top teams now have that real big accumulator of the ball off the halfback flank. And my one to watch this year, and I'll talk about him a bit more, is Isaac Quainer. I can really see him making a claim for that six. It's a very stingy back line if you look at it as well. It gives up the sixth best, sixth best defence statistically in the comp. And has the ability to stop most of the potent forward lines in the comp. For me, though, it's the depth that's an issue. If you look at any of, like, say, the top seven, any injuries in there, a bit like Darcy Moore when he was out last year, you could see they were slightly stretched. 
Jordan Roughhead really grew in stature though with Darcy Moore being out. And I remember last year a lot of pundits were talking about Roughhead and saying he was too slow to be a primary defender, too poor with his disposal, rowdy, rowdy, rowdy. But a bit like Dylan Grimes, he really grew into the role and he's really come out of that mold that's pigeonholed and really went up a gear. And I think he's been a fantastic acquisition. He was one of the best acquisitions last year. So, I mean, that's the back line we've gone with. And for me, I think it's a very strong back line. I do expect to see a few people come in there and break. There's some good arguments to be had. Is it Quinn or is it Noble? Rowdy, rowdy, rah. Appleby, another one. But for me, I think that's my gut of how they line up round one. And the midfield over to there, they're very stellar. And it does have flag written all over it. You've got classy ball users all over the park. Thomas provides the zip and penetration. Side bottom does the simple things well. Really moves the change. Pendlebury is like literally one of my favourite players to watch. As a Carlton fan, it hurts me to say it. He has the ability to make time stand still. Find his way through traffic. He's a confident level head. And the midfield finds a lot of the ball. And it's probably the reason that they rank so high for inside 50 differential as well. Because they are natural target hitters. I would say that they are starting to age. Some of them key cogs are ageing. But having said that, Pendles had one of his best years in ages last year. And for me, he's that type of player that's like a fine wine. The way he plays the game, he will get better. Better with age. And then you've got throwing Trelaw and Adams. You've got like, you know, your grunt there. You've got your flair. For me, they've got the tools to hurt you. Perhaps the next six, though, if there is an injury there, isn't as high. But, I mean, Sia, you've got Brown, Maine. They have shone when called upon. And that's the, the strengths there in that nucleus. Can they do it week in, week out, though? Would Sia, if he had to come and do it week in, out? We don't know. But, for me, they're a great combo when you look at that. You throw in, you know, Brody Grundy on top of that as well. For me, Grundy is, without a doubt, the best, best Ruckman in the competition. Add that extra midfield craft. Very good one-on-one. -on -one, good around the ground. He knows how to kick goals. And when you can get 25 touches from him, it's, it's very difficult to manage. Now, the forward line... Now, they rank in the bottom half for goal accuracy, and I think this is probably an understated issue, 46%. And this is where, you kind of nowadays, goal kicking is so prevalent. Like, the, the high accuracy usually is an indicator of where you are in the league. And I think, let's come on to the elephant in the room, Mason Cox. The big Texan, he never really got into second gear last year. He had a really stellar final series, particularly against that Richmond game, the year just gone. And... For me, I think they missed a trick not selling the farm for Lynch. Will it come to bite them in the backside? I don't know. What Was he always a tiger? Could they have maybe changed the head? You know that the chairman, Maguire, he, he has a habit of getting what he wants. And I just feel like they're a key forward light. I do think Mason will have a better year as he's got someone like Darcy breathing down his neck. But And Myocek was sensational. And he knows where the goals are and brings it down well, particularly for Jado, Dugowie and Hoskin Elliott. He brings it down. A lot of goals on the side for me, they miss was when Jado went. Jado is like literally next level and he's a former Fern Tree gully boy and he's just a natural game breaker. For me, he was the pick in that draft. Elliott was another one as well. He really stood out. Jamie Elliott, he had a good year. And for me, Dugowie is one of the top five most damaging players in the comp. He's a difficult matchup for defenders. He's strong, he's good in the air, he's quick, he, he loves a snag. and I, But I do really feel they need like Mason to jump up to contend and really primary take that target. All the top teams are playing with a target inside 50 and he's got the attributes, it's just the consistency factor. I mean, if I was a pie though, I would be hoping for a solid key to complement this forward line that can be reliable. But the, the forward line is that modern day forward line it does apply pressure it's the fifth most efficient at turning the ball over inside 50 so i mean it, it's got all the tools i just feel they lack you know a premier key forward but i mean Gr myocek looks like he is there let's talk a bit more about the followers i covered grundy a bit without a doubt like i said he is the best ruckman in the comp keen eye for goal unstoppable on his day great midfielder finds the ball as well and they rank so high in the mid midfield stats and I think it is primarily for the ball he wins they get great first use 
Trelaw and Adams for me are like your perfect on ball following. You've got your strength, your grit, your flair. Adams is that mongrel eye type player in there, does all that dirty stuff. Trelaw is the live wire. There isn't much weakness there, and you think that as a trio are very tough to beat. Now, we talked about my ones to watch. I mentioned him earlier, Isaac Querner. For me, I love the kid. I managed to go and see him when he was playing in the under 19s. And it was a rainy day, and I was just blown away by his cleanness of the ball. Um, he's got real good, tenacious second and third effort. And he was one of the few players on the ground that day who seemed to play like it was a sunny day. He was clean. He's got zip, and he's a natural game changer. And you look at the game now, a lot of teams play off the halfback line. That is their beginning of their attack, and he fits that mould. He came in last year, and he showed a bit of signs that he suits the Collingwood model. And I suspect, with Jamie Aish gone, he's one of them guys that I would be looking to, to really lock it in. But for me, without a doubt, he is a 150-gamer for the Collingwood Football Club. Great footballer. And as a Collingwood fan, it's a shame he was landlocked to your side. He's, he's a good little footballer. So, I mean, I've spoke highly, highly about Collingwood. Um, how do you beat them? Well, I mean, one thing about Collingwood is they don't take the chances they haven't done for the last two years. And it's probably one of the things that you know you can maybe put a lot more pressure on them, knowing that they ain't going to do a Richmond and go 70% in a quarter. They don't punish you, and it's a thing that they probably don't destroy teams when they should. You kind of They kind of leave you in the game for as long as possible. And it has been shown over the last year, particularly if you get the jump on them, they struggle to eat away that lead. But for me, it comes down to breaking that link in the midfield. You stifle Pendlebury and side bottom having them easy outs them short kicks like i talked about they're the highest team in the comp for that and you really force them to try and kick it long and that's where teams had success when they had to kick it long the turnovers happened and you could hit them on the counter you stop the easy kick you starve the easy ball you unlock collingwood and for me it just affects their flow they like to do it on their own terms they're a very dominant team when they have the ball when you can see they control games very well particularly when you've got side bottom and pendlebury in Excellent users, excellent people to have on the list. All in all, the strong side, and we can say that the TPI loves the list. TPI has them ranked um, to finish top of the ladder at the end of the season. But remember, never say never. Father time is unbeaten, and eventually the core age turns against you. And for me, this year is their year they need to jump. So, that being said... Best of luck, Collingwood, from me, myself. I um, hope you do well in all your games apart from us. Um, thank you very much for watching. And as always, I've been Dan.